On that note, uh, let's get in, uh, well, the technical experts for the day. We have right at the top, Manav Chopra of India Bulls Ventures, who's joining us on the show. And we also have Ruchit Jain of Angel Broking joining us. Uh, uh, good, good afternoon to both of you, and thanks for well, taking the time out. Manav, let me start with you. Uh, where do we go from here? Is this just... Uh, well, a blip in an otherwise uh, large-scale up move, or would you want to remain cautious at least in the near term? See, at the current levels, the markets have already witnessed a short-term consolidation decline. Uh, you can say it more of corrective in nature. And we are witnessing a lot of consolidation in the market since last couple of days. Uh, you know, uh, seeing the kind of a sharp rally that the markets have already witnessed, uh, usually uh, after such a time there is a phase of a time and a price correction so I think the market is in that mode and we also have important uh, event which is also lined up for the markets going forward so I since at this current level you will see a lot of stock specific action you may not see the throttle momentum in the markets and eventually there will be very sectoral rotation going forward for the Nif bank nifty particularly 20 9,700 is the important support uh, on the lower side and as long as those levels are held you will still uh, maintain a positive bias and can expect a bounce back from the lower levels for the nifty it will be 11,550 levels so at the current juncture after that short term decline I think both the indices are nearing to its important support levels and this could be a good time whereby one can start taking uh, bets only for a trading perspective. Okay. Uh, Richard good afternoon to you too. Uh, what is your view of the markets uh, right now? Yeah, hi, very good afternoon. Uh, well, uh, since last one week, we have seen the index has consolidated more of this in this, in this range of uh, 11,550 to 11,700 on the upside. Now, we believe that this is just a consolidation within an uptrend. The high top high bottom structure that has been formed since the early month of uh, since the first week of March is still continuing and positional traders should use this time correction as an opportunity to again add longs whenever prices come near the lower end of this consolidation phase. If we look at the options activity then uh, no, tomorrow's expiry has the highest open interest built up in 11,700 call which indicates that we may not see a breakout above 11,700 in next one or two trading uh, in next uh, till tomorrow. So I think probably we should see continuation of this consolidation phase but uh, no, positional traders I think they are getting good opportunity in this consolidation to create fresh long positions when the market comes near this 11,550-11,600 range. Amongst the sectoral indices, pharmaceutical sector has shown a signs of positive momentum after a, almost a sideways move of uh, three weeks. The prices, the, in fact, the index has given a breakout above the higher end of this last three weeks of consolidation. So you may see some sector rotation wherein you know, some names from the pharma or some private sector banks could uh, show some outperformance. All right. Well, uh, but uh, what about stocks? Uh, Richard, let me come back to you on the ideas that you have for us today. Also, a couple of names that we are uh, positive on. One is Kotak Bank from the large cap space. After a sharp up move in the first half of March, we had seen a sideways momentum. This has led to formation of a bullish flag pattern. Technically, this is a bullish continuation pattern and this entire consolidation phase of last 2-3 weeks, the 20 days exponential moving average has acted as a very strong support. So, keeping a stop loss below this support, we advise going long on Kotak Bank with stop below 1320, expecting short term target of 1425. And as we mentioned about the pharma space, so DV's lab within the pharma has been a good outperformer if we you know, do some relative strength analysis with some other stocks uh, within this space. So I think this DV's lab uh, would uh, show some good uh, momentum in near term. So traders can look to go along with stock below 1675, expecting target around 1800 in near term. Okay, and Mano, how about you? What stocks are you betting on today? Yeah, my first buy call is on supply. Uh, the prices have actually seen a good corrective decline and post that there is a breakout on the daily and the weekly charts. The breakout that has accompanied today, um, it has been with very sharp volumes which has it which it has witnessed in the last couple of trading sessions. The prices are also closing above with short term averages. Um, and if you're looking on the structure point of view, Sipla after a series of decline is also forming a higher bottom. So I sense uh, going forward Sipla could definitely provide a very good um, a resumption of the uptrend and eventually we could see some much higher targets in the near term perspective. 
we recommend a buy into this with a stop of 540 on the lower side for an upside target of 570 my second call is buy on escorts uh, the prices after a recent decline from its peak of 830 has seen a breakout on the daily charts and uh, the prices are also trading above its long term averages so we conclude saying that you know the recent decline was just corrective in nature and eventually the prices are likely to resume uh, also uh, the, the oscillators are bouncing from its oversold level so escort indicates limited downside from the current zone uh, the stop loss for the stock can be placed at 760 on the lower side for an upside target of 825 okay well uh, that's the technical perspective just before we get in a fundamental wise just one stock on which uh, we need to get a chart check going is sterlite technologies 199 now and has had a corrective move over the last few days i think over the last few months six month returns almost every single month has been negative if we can pull up the seag function on the bloomberg terminal uh, for sterlite technologies and just show you uh, what's happened over the last six months it will show you the kind of pressure that the stock has been in and that that chart uh, shows you um, november and december of 2018 and jan feb march and april of the current year, uh, uh, no, the column below, uh, or the row below rather. Those are essentially uh, the four months and the two months preceding, which have uh, done very well, uh, which which have which show how much pressure the stock has been in. Uh, Manav, just a quick thought here. Uh, in technical parlance, would you believe that a large portion of the damage is done already, or because of this recent stress, uh, does it open up more downsides? Uh, see the prices actually like you mentioned you know it has been an underperformer in the markets recently and it has already witnessed a series of decline uh, uh, the only thing is that the recent advance in last couple of uh, months you know has been accompanied by good amount of volumes and we are also seeing some fresh attraction at least on the volume built up recently uh, I would just want to play this for a short term momentum purpose only if you know keeping an upside of another 10% from the current levels but uh, expecting the complete change in the structure is something that we'll have to still wait out and uh, let the stock play out its own uh, structure in the meantime but uh, I suggest one can only take a, a short term perspective view in this since the momentum is freshly building up but the overall uh, trend is is still uh, on the downside so on the upside one can only play it for 5 to 10 percent uh, on the immediate basis okay uh, before we get in a fundamental voice there's just one more stock that i want to do a technical check on and that's dlf because uh, things have certainly changed considerably for dlf and it's actually bucking the trend so while we do have a handful of these real estate companies which are doing well dlfs is a uh, dlf part me is, is is really under pressure and uh, this is of course after we saw a very sharp drop about a few sessions ago uh, ruchit uh, anything big that's changed change in the trend for DLF, uh, would you go ahead and buy this particular company at, the, at these levels or would you restrain caution? So the stock is now trading near its crucial support levels of around 180, 181 which is the 200 day moving average. Now if you look at some of the historical data then this 200 day moving average you know was crossed after a certain, fairly a long period of time in the in the second week of March. So ideally you know I think tomorrow's trading session uh, maybe next one or two trading session would be more crucial for this stock. In near term uh, since the prices are trading near its support I would wait for a breakout above 191 which is the immediate resistance. In case if we find the stock taking support at this 200 day moving average and if 191 is taken out then one can expect again a good uh, positive momentum in this stock. But because since last two or three trading sessions the momentum is quite negative, the volumes on the down move are also relatively high, I would wait for a breakout above 191 to take any fresh positions uh, from a short term perspective. Okay, well on that note let's get in a fundamental voice. We have Gurmeet Chadda of Complete Circle Consultants joining us on the show right now. Good afternoon Gurmeet and thanks for taking the time out. Uh, Gurmeet, let me start off with the real estate sector itself considering we are on that topic. Uh, we have seen a little bit of uh, well up move. Uh, we've been talking about two of various experts in the industry and we are still getting mixed, uh, you know, uh, should I say, well, uh, feedback with respect to an improvement in the real estate uh, sector as a whole. Where do you stand and if, do you, if you do like the sector, uh, what are the names that you find the most appealing here? Uh, so I, you know it's 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 very interestingly poised uh, as as you mentioned because there are mixed responses and you know you can't really uh, it's 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 not a homogeneous sector so you have to be very careful on uh, what players you are uh, investing in and what geographies you are 
targeting. Uh, I think South Face one seems to be doing better. So uh, you know, top ideas there are SOVA developers. Uh, I think what what uh, GSC has also done is uh, uh, yeah, you will see more uh, you know consolidation towards more organized pairs. The listed companies in in you know will, will gain. If you see, there are very fewer launches now. Uh, there's also a lot of discretion amongst lenders uh, uh, in terms of whom to lend, which again will benefit the uh, the listed ones uh, because of the the ratings and all. Uh, you know, I like DLF uh, with the fundraising they have done. Uh, they have been um, uh, this that shows a lot of commitment on part of the promoters. Uh, the, there is a pickup in the commercial uh, real estate in the in the northern part and across uh, uh, other spaces. I've been speaking to a lot of. Uh, uh, you know, fund houses uh, and groups after the embassy read launch, and a lot of you would see most more prominent groups like even HTFC, uh, you know, get into uh, reads kind of structures, which again will be structurally positive. So, but one has to get into this space with a you know three month, four month staggered view, and then extending the horizon to two to three years. I think the housing market will pick up uh, over the medium term. Uh, also, you must remember that it's a great employment generator, so you will see renewed efforts. Uh, uh, for revival of real estate and construction, also uh, on behalf of the government, and I see, uh, you know, I am of the camp uh, which I have had various discussions also with Neeraj is that there will be multiple rate cuts. So you will see transmission of uh, rate cuts and real estate being one of the interested sensitives to do that. Kurmit, uh, sin actually just before we I talk to you about uh, equities at length, just a quick question on. The development that's happened on the mutual fund front, right? The FMP plans on which uh, Kotak uh, AMC has written to investors that some of, uh, I mean, you know, it's not a full redemption of sorts. The money is slightly lower, uh, so on and sure. so forth. You, you know the issue. Uh, what happens next for yeah. people who have held that paper in the belief that the entire sum will come back? So, Neeraj, actually, you know, each FMP has to be taken one by one. Uh, of the one which recently matured, uh, there were two papers of the of the Z Promoter Group. Um, uh, so, so you have you have three papers in these FMPs which are creating a concern. Two papers of the Z Promoter Group, and one is the ILSS Transportation Paper, where there is already 100% provisioning done. On the Z Group, I think uh, my discussion with the fund house and some of it is a little confidential is that the money will come back, a large part of it will come back because the cover uh, 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 for because there's an agreement till September. So if one is a little patient for next three to four months, uh, you know the money is will come back. Uh, the cover typically is 1.5 times the shares. So unless the share price collapses below 2 to 75 to 80, uh, you know I don't see much haircut there. ILFS is the one which will create, uh, uh, you know, uh, near a bit of a hard one. But if you broadly take these FMPs in 2015 came when the yields were nine quarter to nine and a half, maybe slightly better in direct plans. So there will be the the, the realization uh, over next three months. So you'll get some money now and you'll get some money three to four months uh, later. The overall yields would still, assuming nothing comes of ILFS, would still be above 8%. And if you add indexation because these FMPs will have for about three, three years, three months, three years, six months, the post-tax yield will also be above seven, seven quarter. So I think there's more hue and cry than what, what's why, why it's an event because FMPs have never done this. In fact, one similar incident happened in 2008-9 when Fortis uh, AMC at that point of time uh, had a delayed payment. They, 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 they were earlier FMPs were allowed to be redeemed uh, uh, in between also by paying a load. So they had put a cap where they paid money, you know, few lakhs every week. Uh, so, but the entire thing again got settled in three to four months. So I would advise patience and caution. It's a large fund house. They have a huge debt book, and uh, there is a collateral in place. Hmm. Okay, let's talk about pressures in some of the other pockets as well. Gurmeet, I don't know how closely you look at Starlight Technologies, but. Uh, this recent pain that we see in that stock, what do you make of it? I mean, if everything was, uh, if everything was okay, then it would show on the screen, right? There would be buyers that would come in for a stock which arguably trades at 12, 13 times. Correct. So, Neeraj, uh, I think uh, the last quarter numbers were very good. I mean, if you if you recollect, the, uh, there was almost a 60% jump. Uh, it's, it's one of the better optical fiber makers. Uh, so, purely on numbers, uh, and on valuations, which you rightly pointed out, it, it does look uh, compelling to have a look at. 
but you know what i have learned in these kind of markets is that uh, you know this is what we saw even with some of the other names like z when they used to report good numbers and then get hammered uh, you know uh, for various reasons eventually market is more right uh, and obviously it's probably seeing few more things coming so maybe we can wait and let the stock settle down but compelling at these valuations mm. Okay, good mean uh, you know we spoke about a sector which which was which has been doing well that's the real estate sector but the other sector which is uh, in a little bit of a pickle is the auto sector in fact i'm looking at the uh, uh, nifty auto index which is down around 6.5% currently and the only saving grace in this particular index is the the gains that we've seen in Tata Motors which has actually gained as much as 25% on a year to date basis but if we leave that aside we've seen weakness in M&M Hero Motor Corp TVS Motor a company uh, matheson sumi aisha motors all of them are losing out more than 10% on a year to date basis so give me the question is one if you were invested in the auto sector would you remain invested and two would you go ahead and make fresh investments in the auto sector especially given we have seen such a significant correction or would you want to wait for a few months before you start initiating and allocating a little more in this particular sector so uh, you know uh, so two two parts to this uh, uh, you know what so my my sense is that uh, uh, if you and you know we, you played out the the fada uh, uh, spokesperson on on how march has been a little better uh, so i think i am you know i'm of the camp that maximum pessimism is usually a good time to uh, accumulate some of the quality names uh, so if you if you talk about two wheelers you have three players who dom- who dominate the industry you have hero which is virtually 50% you have bajaj and then you have tvs which is 90% of the industry now if you see bajaj uh, from a low of 15% market share they are already at 21% market share this there is cash in the balance sheet uh, and they are all three segments uh, which is exports three wheelers and two wheelers they are you know showing volume growth although you know the margin is something you know uh, which, which 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 is debatable So if you were to ask me, I will start probably accumulating Bajaj Auto for now, uh, uh, and I know it's very difficult to create, uh, you know, this kind of a dealer distribution network uh, for somebody else to come and replicate. Uh, so you know, so this is a to me this is a transitionary phase. I have a lot of clients who who, who run auto auto are auto dealers. The number of inquiries are still okay. Uh, I think a lot of things came uh, uh, at one go, which which is which were related to emission norms, tight financing, higher raw material costs. uh so over a 2 3 month i'll start picking up two wheelers for now uh because uh, uh, you know a, there is 70 80% is captive financing so the credit would not be an issue uh election season typically more money in rural areas is is positive news for auto four wheelers i might just want to wait for a month uh, i would be a contrarian investor in tata motors early simply because i think china business to me will turn around and by that time the numbers come on the print the stock prices probably would have run up so tata motors in in the passenger vehicles for me as a tactical bet and bajaj auto on the fundamental side okay um stay on actually a couple of charts that i want to talk about since we are talking about autos and if we can get those charts up on the screen now uh, and i'll ask our technical experts about those stocks since we are talking about tata motors let's first show that chart and now this is a chart that was used in the hot money show today one of our experts recommended this as a buy as per the macd indicators saying that there is a positive crossover that has happened and this now stock has broken out above the trend line that was drawn uh, in the last one and a half one and a quarter years manav the stock has already rallied quite a bit in the last 3 months but there is apparently a breakout from those trend lines would you believe that too and would your targets be higher than where they are right now see uh, if you're looking this chart on a weekly to monthly basis uh, the structure is definitely the prices are bouncing from its steep oversold levels and uh, uh, the, if you're talking about the risk reward ratio on a larger time frame definitely the risk reward ratio is very favorable because uh, on a high time frame the stock still has a potential to even rally towards uh, the levels of 265 to 280 uh, keeping that in mind uh, the uh, uh, you know the prices and the momentum is building up on the shorter time frame the volumes are also indicating a good uh, move that will eventually uh, unfold in weeks to come eventually taking a position at the current levels can also be initiated the important support for this stock on the weekly basis is around 200 so 200 um, and 210 are the likely support zone 
uh, where the stocks would provide cushion in case of any decline. So, you know, this is the uh, price level where one can look to initiate long positions. Also, today on the daily charts, there is a fresh breakout above the 200 EMA with above average volume. So, you know, there is a definitely a good uh, hint on the structural changes. Eventually, one should not be trading this on a very short term perspective, but any dips opportunity, one should look to buy this for a medium term to long term perspective. Okay, well, uh, the other uh, you know chart that we addressed in today's day of trade and today's show, Hot Money Show, was Madison Sumi again from the Auto Pack. Uh, the chart which is on your screen currently, it actually looks at drawdowns over well, the last I would say 20, 25 odd years, and as you can see, that every time there has been a drawdown of around 50 to 70 percent, there has been an up move. Uh, of course, this. Well, largely involves a very large, or a ra it does involve a larger time, time frame, a longer time, time frame. So back in 2004, and that's repeated in 2008, we've seen a similar uh, well, down move, a similar drawdown in 2011, very recently in 2016, and most recently, a 52% decline from its peak for Madison Sumi in around 2018. And from there, if we can actually flip this over and move on to the other chart and take a look at uh, you know what the near term uh, per perspective is here. Now this shows you what's happened in 2019, and according to one of our experts, it suggests that it's it's looking at a little bit of a spring, and after which it did move and try to move towards levels of 165 odd. It's come and taken support just below the mark of around 148, 147. From here on. Uh, at least that particular expert is expecting a little bit of a breakout for, for Madison Sumi from here on. Um, Ruchit, uh, what would you do with Madison Sumi? What is your analysis of this one and uh, how would you trade it? What's the risk reward ratio looking like when it, when it comes to the near term as well as the, as the, the long term view? If I look at some of the historical data, then uh, no, since uh, the correction in Madhusudan Shumi uh, started well in uh, in the month of January 2018, when the prices were around 260. The stock formed this low top, low bottom structure for the entire calendar year of 2018. In, in fact, till first uh, second week of February, the prices made a bottom around 127 in second week of February then gave a bounce back move but in that bounce back move again the 200 day moving average which has acted as a resistance in this entire downtrend that was not taken out and we have seen a price correction again but what was different this time that after this price correction in about second first or second week of march the prices for the first time after after this one and a half one year of downtrend had made a higher bottom so this is the first higher bottom which has been formed but still we have not seen any formation of the higher top so there is a probability that the stock is now done with the price wise correction that is behind us so we may not see a significant form from here on but there is still time correction left in the stock so if one is looking from about medium term perspective now i think the prices would continue to consolidate in this range of 170 to 130 140 so if one is looking from a you no know, medium term perspective then i think you know this consolidation phase or time wise correction would be seen in madhasan sumi from a very short term trading perspective i would like to trade the stock only on a breakout above 155 156 which is the swing high in case if that is taken out then the 200 dma resistance which we are talking about which is around 170 that could be seen so for traders i would advise to buy this stock only above 156 that too not for any huge targets but up to 170 could be seen which is which would be the higher end of this consolidation phase Okay, fair enough. So that's your technical view on Madhusudan Sumi. But uh, Gurmeet, if you can weigh in, uh, you know, take a look at the fundamentals. Uh, the, co the company had said very lofty targets for FY20. At this point, at least some, uh, you know, pockets in the media are indicating that management is not so confident about the revenue target of 18 billion dollars, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, where do you yeah. go from here when it comes to Madhusudan Sumi and as an investment from a fundamental standpoint? I know it has relatively, well, I would say relatively better return uh, ratios, but in terms of growth, it's simply not, it hasn't been up to the mark. So what are you doing with this one? So, you know, if you see, Nigel, the, uh, the $18 billion target also had uh, around $6 billion through acquisitions, and which is where the... Uh, the question mark comes on. So if you see, see if you see as a player, you know it's it's the largest uh, maker in the world on, in wiring harness. 
it started off in india in 1986 as a wiring harness supplier to maruti and has really come a long way since then uh, it's also one of the largest player in uh, in the polymers uh, space it's the second largest in rear view mirrors uh, so my my uh, uh, hypothesis here is that once the vehicle demand stabilizes uh, the biggest trend in this space is rising content per vehicle uh and i think mothers and sumi with the with the product range it has it also has a great track record of uh doing in organic acquisitions and creating a lot of value and turning it around if you go uh, last 15 20 years uh the prices prices look good uh but i would wait for the 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 overall auto industry to stabilize uh, a good buy at these levels maybe one can accumulate 10 20% if you want to put 100 rupees today in mothers and sumi and then gradually get into it the other one which i like which i Uh, we have had a lot of discussions is minda because there are a lot of uh, regulatory uh, things which will come in so you know the air bag the air bags will become compulsory from mid of year uh, there as i said there is the demand for content per vehicle is typically 1 and 1/2x of the of the vehicle demand so mothers and sumi and minda industries both for me look very very good long term plays from a 3 to 5 year but maybe gradually accumulate uh, for next two months Okay, uh, stay on, gentlemen. So much more to talk about as we slip into a short break. Here out Mahesh Nandurkar of CLSA, who decodes the investor sentiment on Indian equities and uh, find out where he pegs the Nifty target for the near, near term. What has happened over the last three months is, uh, you know, two things. The uh, global investor sentiment towards emerging market has improved significantly, and also the sentiment towards India has also, uh, you know, improved significantly. So uh, we did uh, take cognizance of that, and uh, we did uh, kind of, you know, uh, change some portfolio allocations, and uh, we did turn more optimistic, uh, you know, on the market, uh, you know, about a month or a couple of months ago. but the thing is we still uh, you know believe that uh, the valuations uh, you know are in the higher territory uh, the market the nifty still trades at about 18 times on a one year forward basis also the the data points from the uh, you know from the bottom up basis <clears throat> you know at the broader economic level or even from the individual companies level doesn't appear to be all that great so uh, there's a bit of a mismatch between the investor sentiments and the bottom up economic data uh, but i guess uh, what ultimately matters uh, you know for the stock market performance in the near term is the investor sentiments uh, those are clearly on the positive side and uh, we therefore expect uh, the markets to continue to do well <coughs> at least over the next few months hmm does it change your target on the index in any way Yes so uh, you know i would be looking at uh, the index moving closer to sort of 12000 or maybe a little bit beyond that uh, over the next few months Okay the other point being now that we've got elections around the corner uh, you know a 21 global in, 21 global investor survey conducted suggested that it's not just <coughs> about uh, the result of the election now that matters and uh, whether or not the modi government comes back into power with a majority or not it's more about the focus and the agenda with regards to the economic pickup and the growth that needs to be focused on bringing back jobs uh, into uh, the economy and and a broader pers- perspective as such you know would you say that all of what we've seen in the last one month is a precursor to the election results being baked in and that could actually reverse if the results are not favorable yes i think the market is uh, factoring in a uh, more stable government uh, you know at this point in time uh, clearly the market is factoring a higher probability of that uh, i wouldn't however say that it's fully baked in uh, as yet because uh, it's never done till the time it's done as we have seen uh, many a time in uh, the last sort of you know several election cycles that we've seen here in india uh, not just in india uh, you know elsewhere in the world as well uh, so i would say yes uh, now the market is building in maybe like a 70 75% 80% chances of a stable government but not fully baked in as yet uh, but having said that uh, i would also say that the market rally that we've seen here in india is uh, not attributable only to what's been happening within india or the political sentiments etc but a large part of the rally is also associated with what's been happening globally i mean you look at uh, the uh, the asian indices or even the global uh, sort of you know the msci world index uh, index uh, all of these indices have done very well over the last 4 uh, 5 months up uh, between 10% to 15% 
Uh, so India is not the only market. So uh, I would say a large part of the rally that we've seen is more due to the improvement in the sentiments of the global investors. Uh, you know, due to global factors like now we are building in a probability of uh, you know a possibility of a rate cut uh, you know in the US we're also uh, sort of talking about uh, the uh, European Bank uh, you know ECB also going very slow uh, we are also looking at a possibility of uh, you know a resolution between the trade conflict between the US and China so there are a variety of global factors which have also turned favorable and yes uh, the improvement in the political sentiments here in India has also added uh, to that here on Bloomberg. Quinn, less than 24 minutes left for the markets to shut shop and we are down a percent for the Sensex. Nearly a percent for the Sensex and the Nifty Bank. So 300 odd points down for the Nifty Bank as well. 85 points for the Nifty. Uh, we've gone down and we've stayed low. That's the key thing. Um, HDFC Bank, the big culprit, but must say IT is following suit with TCS and HCL Tech. Looking slightly wobbly. Bharti Airtel now is the top loser on the index. The broader end of the spectrum punctuated by a lot of losers and we'll talk about them with the Ashin just moments from now. But keep in mind, from a Lakshmi Vilas Bank to a Century Ply to a Starlight Tech, all of those stocks under pressure. Just a quick check on what the world markets are doing before we get in the Fab Four stocks of the day and show you what Europe is up to and what the US futures would be up to. Yesterday was a down day for S&P and the Dow. Right now, flattish to maybe a mixed bag for the European indices and the Dow futures, which corrected marginally yesterday. Let's see what they're doing today in the green. So we have our own problems to grapple with, I would reckon. 300 points for the Nifty Bank. Let's try and find out if there are Fab Four stocks in a scenario like this and find out what's made it to Yash's list. Yash, good afternoon. What's made it to your list? Good afternoon, Neeraj. Uh, so firstly, there is uh, Wipro uh, in the Fab Four list, and that is on the back of the piece of news uh, in Times of India, uh, which says that the company has actually received market regulator SEBI's approval uh, for its buyback. Now, the company is set to announce a huge $1.8 billion buyback, which is close to about 12,000 crore rupees, uh, with the share price uh, fixed at about... Uh, uh, premium of 12% uh, to its uh, previous market price, so watch out for that. Uh, Praj Industries had at one point surged more than 8%, and this is on the back of the news that uh, the company has in fact entered into an agreement with US-based Jivo uh, for the for the manufacturing and uh, you know promotion of uh, non-renewable -renew uh, products. Uh, Greaves Cotton is up to a, two and a half percent uh, after the company uh, after media reports uh, suggest that the company will foray uh, into the EV space uh, and is likely uh, to roll out uh, its uh, e-scooters uh, sometime this month. Uh, lastly, watch out for Rain Industries. It has been moving significantly higher over the last few trading sessions, up five percent today as well, with volumes coming in significantly higher, uh, more than three times uh, its 20-day average. Back to you. Yes, thank you so much for bringing us those five first talks of the day. Of course, uh, to talk about Praj industry specifically, it, uh, it's advancing today after seven straight days of losses. So uh, perhaps this is a positive development for the company. Essentially, it's, I mean, it's, it's open with gains of around six percent. It's been largely hanging, say for uh, a, you know, a very sharp spike in the last half an hour or, or so of trade. But you know, we we've, we've seen crude gr rise. Too. And uh, I'm sure there are, there are a lot of sectors out there which, which move on account of crude. It's currently at around $71 to a barrel and at a many month high. But uh, what do you do with OMCs in such a circumstance? Uh, let me just take this question up with Gurmeet. Gurmeet, uh, what would you do with something like an IOC, BPCL, or, or or for that matter, if you you know talk about the other end of the stream uh, of the spectrum, something with a reliance, something like a reliance industry, for that matter, uh, how would you approach these stocks now, given the given crude is yeah. where it is right now? So I think uh, you have to be a little tactical here. Usually, what we have seen is that whenever the uh, if you see last quarter for OMCs, the average price uh, uh, for the quarter for crude. And I'm talking more from an inventory gain or loss perspective. It was about $64, and you had a falling crude. This quarter, the the average price is about $66, $67, with a rising crude, which means that uh, instead of inventory loss, uh, either it will be flat or you could have a uh, marginal gain. 
Uh, also, if you see the the uh, the gross marketing margins, they've been about five five and a half rupees to a liter. Uh, the only concern, obviously, has been the Singapore uh, benchmark in terms of gross refining margins, which is around three dollars, uh, with slight pickup towards the end of the quarter. So my sense is that the quarterly numbers which will come by may not be bad, uh, uh, and you have to look these companies more tactically. So you uh, might want to get into them with a good a good price correction. Obviously, you will not. I mean, HPCL below 200 or some of the other names which came down probably will not get them at that prices. But if there is a sharp fall and crude stabilizes, you might enter before quarterly results and then probably make a trading view on it. But you can't take a long fundamental view on these stocks uh, till the time the crude prices remain where they are. Okay. Some queries on our uh, platforms for both our technical and fundamental experts. Uh, a couple of fundamental queries first, and I can imagine one of the stocks on which a lot of retail investors had parked themselves in, finding some queries. Uh, that's Bansali Engineering and Polymers, or BPL. Not surprised that uh, there is a query being asked on that one. Gurmeet, any thoughts here? Uh, Neeraj, I don't track this uh, stock, so won't be able to. Yeah, I think the stock did very well until recently but the last uh, two quarters it's gone off the boil completely uh, there is also a fundamental view request on Aishar Motors uh, now Gurmeet uh, whether Aishar Motors is a good stock to buy or vis-a-vis -vis Aishar I mean instead of Aishar would you put that money whatever the amount is into some other stock So, uh, Neeraj, I think uh, it's it's getting to a level where probably uh, the uh, on on a valuation basis, you know, you're getting a little comfortable. The uh, the ex Ashok Leyland uh, uh, CEO joining them is probably some good news. Uh, with Sadat Lal uh, uh, being concentrating only more more as a promoter. Uh, so purely from a uh, and 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 I know the guy carries a lot of uh, you know great great credibility and credentials. Uh, also, I think they're they're uh, while we keep discussing on the the Enfield bit, uh, what we also we don't probably discuss is their JB with uh, with with Volvo, which to be at the mid end. I think uh, there is some some pick uh, pick up likely this year. So Aishar, uh, you know, maybe post results one can start accumulating. Uh, uh, my sense is that, uh, uh, as I said, the the Royal Enfield brand uh, uh, cannot be written off. Uh, the, the the new launches of the 650 cc variants have been pretty decent. There's a lot of work happening in uh, exports and over, overseas markets. Uh, so may not be a bad price point for Aishar Motors, but I would like to wait for one more bad news to come in to get into a better entry point. So hold on for now. Okay. Hold on for the time being uh, is the call that is likely, uh, that is from Gurmeet on Aisha Motors uh, 20975. Uh, what's not done well though, and now trading in the lowest point of the day is Bharti Airtel. So before we talk to Yatin about what dealing rooms are saying, a quick technical perspective out here. Manav Bharti Airtel, the top loser now, 338 and counting. See, actually, if looking at the structure of Bharti Airtel on a high time frame, it looks very impressive. Um, uh, I sense that there is a good medium term bottom in making for this stock. And, uh, you know, it has been trying to consolidate at the lower levels, finding its support around the zone of 330 uh, or 330, 320 on the downside. And, you know, there are a lot of uh, divergence pattern on the momentum indicators are also hinting for a near term bottom in place. So, um, I would want to take a contra bet into Bharti Airtel uh, in case of the short term declines manages to hold around the support of 320 330 i think that would be a good time to initiate long positions because from there on maximum downside that i see into the stock is not more than five percent and uh, whereas uh, looking at the uh, overall uh, structural move you know since the prices have declined on a larger time scale from 500 levels uh, will not be surprised to see in case of these support levels hold the stock can again uh, come back to the levels of 380 to 400 so i would want to take a contra bet on the lower levels for bharti Airtel. Okay, a little over a quarter of an hour left for the markets to close, so it wouldn't be a bad time to get in a dealing room check of what the dealing rooms are telling their clients. And on that note, I'm going to get in Yatin Motor to uh, give us that channel check. Uh, Yatin, good afternoon. Nagam, and uh, you know, uh, in the morning also we're talking about certain auto ancillaries and how earnings could be 
uh, battery stocks are quite active in trade today. We have both Excite as well as Amara Raja batteries, which are quite active in trade. Uh, you know, half to one percent up for all of them. As uh, dealers indicate that domestic funds are buyers in trade, as far as all of these auto ancillaries are concerned. Also, Havels is uh, one stock uh, today. Nomura came out of the report saying that the valuations are probably stretched. Uh, dealers uh, do indicate uh, STBT kind of strategy, which is basically sell today by tomorrow and finally uh, marico uh, is uh, you know one of the fmcg stocks wherein dealers do indicate uh, that uh, buying is happening in select fmcg stroke defensive stocks uh, given the weak market conditions so a lot of money flowing into uh, these fmcg names so watch out for marico uh, dealers expect the momentum to continue here on the positive side okay, we'll watch out for this one as well some developments on the positive side maybe uh, is what dealers are telling that in mota couple of days before earnings and we'll talk about IT extensively tomorrow and day after I'm sure but Gurmeet uh, we may not have you tomorrow and day after so talking to you today what do you expect the big boys to do TCS and Infosys? Neeraj uh, uh, I think it would be a steady quarter I'm probably more optimistic on Infosys uh, you know defending their uh, margins between that 22-24% uh, band uh, also, I think the, the deal win momentum is, is pretty solid. Uh, whatever little conversations I've been having across my clients and people who work in IT is that it could be for emphasis, it could be in that one, one to two billion kind of a range. Uh, all, you know, the BFSI vertical continues to do well uh, with now, you know, uh, most central banks getting into the easing mode, uh, uh, you know, Sooner or later, it may not be very bad news for uh, uh, for for the IT majors. Uh, the currency would be a bit of a thing to watch out for because you know a percentage appreciation in rupee typically has a 20-30 basis impact. So I think it would be steady. Uh, uh, it may not be disappointing. It may not be uh, how the results have been coming out. IT has been a one of the best performing sectoral index for the last 12 months. So I think it will be steady. And uh, top picks for me would be uh, Infi and uh, Tech Mahindra. Okay, uh, Gurmeet, if I can just, uh, you know, do a follow-up there. Uh, you know, in, in, in Infosys specifically, the last two quarters, we've seen margins contract, and I'm not talk, just talking about the Panaya, you know, step-down that they've taken. If I keep that aside, uh, what, is, what has also been typical of the entire sector as a whole is that a lot of these managements have said that they're facing a talent crunch, which is why they're seeing their operating expenses will come off to a certain extent. Their margins are coming off too. And I read at least two reports where the suggestion is that there could be a small chance that Infosys could project lower margins for the upcoming financial year. How are you reading into these factors when it comes to operating margins specifically, maybe for emphasis perhaps for the entire sector when it comes to the challenge crunch they're facing? So I think I think that's a that's a very good point you've made, and uh, so uh, also if you club this crunch with the visa rejection rates, you know those are at an all-time high. Uh, so they're they're you know, uh, the expenses, uh, both uh, on-site, off-site seems to be going up, A, because of talent crunch, second, because of the visa rejections. Uh, and then there is a currency uh, headwind, which, which used to be a tailwind uh, uh, till a few quarters back. So there will be some concerns there, but I, I uh, my sense is that there's also a lot of cost-cutting initiatives they are, they are undertaking. Uh, so uh, my view is they'll be able to probably retain the margin maybe at the lower end and, and not at the higher end. And the deal win momentum might slightly compensate for a small, uh, you know, erosion in, in, in margins. Also, the the, uh, the, uh, the the share of the digital business, uh, you know, if you see quarter on quarter, uh, which is a more a high margin business is picking up. Uh, so that could also be a bit of a offset. But you're right. Some of the concerns are valid and I'll not be surprised if there is a small revision. The point of our, about the digital revenues, of course, is uh, also it does make a lot of sense because uh, that is the portion which is providing higher margins. But uh, from that on, uh, I'm going to address another uh, real estate sector and I want to take a technical check here because I want to talk about overall realty for just a bit here. Uh, well, of course, uh, while the real estate sector or the real realty index has advanced by around 19, 20 odd percent, uh, overall realty has actually seen an outperformance uh, on a year to date basis. And um, it is is also, it's not the top performing uh, you know, company in this particular sector, but Obera Realty certainly has picked up steam over the last few days. So Richard, let me come to you on Obera Realty. Uh, what are you picking up on this one and what are the technicals telling you? 
Alam, this talk uh, no, gave a breakout out of the consolidation phase in the mid of February and the breakout was supported by very high volumes. Post that last one and a half months, we have continuously seen a high top, high bottom structure getting formed. And even if you compare the volumes during this up move, the up moves have been supported by very good volumes. So there are signs that this uptrend is likely to continue. The initial targets would be the earlier April 2018 highs, which were around 600, 610 kind of range. So I think from here on, we should see 600 kind of levels in very near term. And if the prices hold to give a uh, give a move above that uh, previous highs as well, then I think this standard phase is likely to continue towards the next retracement targets, which would come somewhere around uh, 700 as well. That would be a bit from a medium term perspective, but at least from a short term perspective, I think we should see levels around 600 very soon. Uh, watch out for those. By the way, the markets have now uh, are trading at the lowest point of the day. The Nifty Bank, 1.0321 points lower. The Sensex, 365 points lower. So it's looking very wobbly. The stock that's really borne the brunt of some selling the last few days is Asian Paints. Yesterday's session, the, the CLSA downgrade down about 3%. Today's session, 25 Now it's reached the target price that they'd mentioned in the report. The other one that is correcting today again on a downgrade is Century Ply, down about 4% after CLSA went down and cut the target price. So on Asian Paints, of course, remember, it was a double downgrade. Um, closing strategies from our experts, and then we'll get views on these consumption names too. But uh, Manav, your top closing strategy today. See, at the current level, I'd like to go with uh, uh, Light. Uh, the stock has been in a very good uptrend. In fact, it has been forming a series of high tops and bottoms, and the prices have also taken support near its short-term averages. And looking at the markets, I think this could be a good defensive bet. The stock has an important support at 1260 uh, on the lower side, which can be a stop loss for an upside target of 300 uh, for an upside target of 1315. Okay, Richard, the same question to you. Your closing ideas for this afternoon? So we have seen that our markets are in the consolidation phase in the range of 11,550 to 11,700. Now we are closing near the support end of the range. So I think it does not, uh, no, I think it makes sense to create some long positions over here, considering that uh, we are very close to the support. Siemens among the stock specific names have been, has been showing an outperformance in spite of Nifty being down by around 90 points. We have seen that the stock is holding up near its day's high. Uh, I think you know, looking at this outperformance and the short term trend which is also positive, I would recommend uh, doing a BTST trade in Siemens at current levels with stock below 100 and, uh, 1145, expecting target somewhere around 1200 in tomorrow's session. Mm. Okay. Now Asian pains, right? Uh, at 1400, Gurmeet, uh, promising story, valuations rich even after this correction, would you use this to add Asian pains or would you believe that there will be better times available? So uh, adding it, Neeraj, I think, I think this is one stock which is in my category is buy and forget uh, along with HDFC Bank. So any any dips are welcome uh, if you have a 5-10 year view. Uh, as I, and we have discussed this, you know, there's a structural story. Uh, there is a consumer uptrading which is happening, which we have discussed. Uh, the joint families are becoming nuclear families. Uh, there's a conversion happening from Lime to to, to branded paints, uh, and I think Asian paint caters. If, if you see, it's a forty thousand crore industry nearest odd. Its share is about sixty percent, which is about two and a half times uh, the nearest competitor. And uh, you know they are also trying to transition into a complete home solutions provider. Uh, uh, and they have they have brands across the price points. You have a you have an, you know the Utsa and the other, which are the lower price points one. And then you have the Royal. Uh, there's a lot of new product launches they have done. Uh, some price hikes they have done, and also on margins, I think both crude and 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 uh, the titanium dioxide, which is the is a key material here. Uh, uh, from a from a base of what it is, it may not really uh, hurt the margins too much. This hike in crude is more April specific and not not last quarter. So so unless crude really shoots up to eighty eighty five dollars, uh, you know I I really don't see any issues there. One one should be a buyer on dips for Asian things. Okay, and Gurmeet, just quick thoughts on Century Ply. That's the other one that has seen a downgrade today. Any thoughts here? So, uh, Neeraj, there, you know, uh, there is, uh, uh, you know, uh, I would probably would like to uh, watch out for the quarterly numbers they come in. Uh, you know, if you see the uh, the overall uh, uh, business, I think it is it has benefited, uh, you know, uh, the 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 sector as a whole because it's a huge unorganized space which they operate in uh, uh, with the local players. 
you know, a lot of my relatives are into uh, timber and other stuff. So the overall outlook seems to be quite, uh, uh, you know, flattish, uh, uh, especially in the northern part, I would say. There are better home improvement themes if you want to play. Uh, you know, uh, uh, then century you could you could look at CVC pipes as a segment there the volumes are are going uh, uh, thick and fast. Uh, you know, uh, a fast moving electrical goods again part of the home improvement segment. That again to me is a is a secular story. The summers has just started, so that should be a good. So there are better plays in the home improvements uh, uh, theme than than a plywood right now. Even sanitary wear makers. So you know you play those themes better right now rather than get into century for now. Okay, Gurmeet, uh, fair enough. Uh, well, uh, thank you for joining us and taking us through your views on the markets uh, and some very valid points made out there by Gurmeet too. Uh, we just have about five minutes left, so I'm going to take some final thoughts from our technical experts as well. Marav, coming back to you, it looks like the Nifty is likely to close around 11,583. Well, below 11,600. So uh, I reckon your view stands when it comes to what you had said earlier in the show ab about an hour ago. Yes, it's, it's the same. You know, I, I did mention that, you know, the markets are likely to consolidate and on the lower side, 11,550 is the support. So, you know, as long as those supports hold uh, this and, uh, you know, I don't see much of a downside from these current levels. So it's again a good time you know this opportunity of markets where we can go and take uh, some uh, short term uh, bets on the upside but uh, even though 550 breaks uh, i think the the next support comes at 11500 so there are series of supports on the immediate basis and on the near term uh, i sense we could see some sort of a consolidation in the market and maintain stock specific view could be the right strategy going forward ruchit uh, so based on what's happened today uh, actually, the last three days were in a bit of a yo-yo. What's your prediction of what will happen in the near term, tomorrow or for the rest of the week? Sindra, I don't think one should uh, know worry much because of this today's 80-90 point correction that we have seen. I think, you know, if we look at some of the options data, then, you know, for this uh, weekly expiry, which is scheduled tomorrow, 11,500, 11,700 options have seen good writing. So, this is probably a consolidation phase, which should continue for tomorrow's trading session as well. But from a near-term perspective, use this decline as a buying opportunity because the broader trend for the market is still positive and 11,550, you know, technically is a good support for the markets. So, I think if one is looking from a positional perspective, then this decline should be bought into. Okay. Manav, quick 30 seconds, same question to you. Yes, uh, uh, see, uh, uh, looking looking forward, I think like I mentioned, 11,550 is the support, but most importantly, you know, looking at the bank nifty also, we've seen a good amount of corrective decline in bank nifty of around 600, 700 points. So, uh, given a choice, I think looking at the PSU banks, since it is already declined, I think one can also start taking selective bets in PSU banks. Uh, if I have to choose one from the PSU, I think SBI has already declined from its peak of 340. So, 300 is an important support. If that holds, you can still uh, expect some sort of a recovery coming from the lower levels. Gentlemen, Ruchit as well as Manav, thank you so much for taking the time out and being with us today and giving us your thoughts. Appreciate your time. Let's start wrapping up the markets uh, for uh, our viewers. About three quarters of a percent in the red for the Nifty, about a percent lower for the Sensex and the Nifty Bank.